Hi and welcome, in this video I'm going to be going over how to create a wall running system. First we want to go into the first person character and we're first going to create some new variables. So the first one is going to be wall running and we're just going to use this to detect when we're on the wall. I'm going to create another variable and I'm going to call this jumps left. This is going to be how many jumps our character has and this is just going to be an integer. So now that we've and I'm going to set this to 2. And now that we've got that set up, I'm going to set up the jumping system. So I'm first going to delete away this jump. And instead, in order to jump, we're first going to have to make a branch. And the condition is going to be that we have more than two jumps. So we're going to get our jumps left. And if this jumps left is greater than 2, we're going to allow our character to jump. So I'm just going to plug that in. And after this, we're going to decrement this, which means we'll just take away 1 from our jumps left counter, so we only have one jump left after this. And then after this, we're going to have another branch to check if we're on the wall run, because we're going to have our jump system be a bit different if we're on a wall. And if we are not on a wall, we're then just going to launch our character. So if we go for the launch character function, and if we just click the Z overdrive, and I'm just going to make my jump value 500. If we are wall running, we are going to launch our character, but we're going to do something a bit different. So if we go for the launch character, I'm going to still tick the Z and on the launch velocity, we're going to split the structure and we're going to make the Z value 500 so we can move upwards. But we're just going to do something a bit different with the X and Y uh, keys. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the actor's right vector and we're just going to duplicate this again. And then we are going to uh, Multiply this, so we'll multiply this by a float, and I'm going to make this around 250. Like the higher this is, the more we're going to jump to the left or right when we're warning. So vector multiply float by float, and then we make this negative 250. You'll see why in a minute. And uh, we're then going to get the select, and I'm just going to change this to a, a boolean, and we're going to create a new variable which is called on right. So if we're on the right of the wall, we're gonna jump, make our character jump to the left and when we're on the left, we're gonna make our character jump to the right. So we're just gonna plug this in and then we're gonna uh, split the structure of this. And then we're just gonna plug this into the X and plug into the Y. So if we drag on our on right variable, if we're on the right, if this is true, we're going to launch our character to the left. That's why the value is negative. And if we're on the left, we're going to launch our character to the right. And that's why that value is positive. And uh, now we have our jump system. So if we just click play, whoops, and if we double, we press space or we can jump twice, but we can't jump anymore. So I forgot to do something. So if we go to the event on landed, and when we land, we're going to set our jumps left to two so that we have two jumps after we have uh, jumped and we land on the ground. So if we just compile and save this, we now have our jump system. So if we just test this, we have a double jump and then we can jump again. Okay, so um, everything is good there. So next, on event begin play, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna get the character movement and we just drag this. If we set plane, I think it's set plane constraint, we want to enable, set plane constraint enabled. We want to enable this, so if we just uh, tick this. So we're going to use this when we're on a wall, so we just can't move up or down when we're wall running, it'll just be straight. So now we're going to set up our wall running script. So uh, if we go to our viewport, if we go to our capsule component, if we just duplicate this, and I'll name this wall capsule, and I'm going to make this 100 and the radius 60 and if we go to its collision presets I'm going to make it overlap everything so overlap all and you want to make it simulation generate hit effect and if we go to our event graph on wall or capsule on component begin overlap so when we overlap our wall we're going to start the sport running script so the other actor must have the tag so actor has tag and wall so walls which are tagged with actors which have this tag won't be able to wall run on them. So if it has this tag, we're going to have a branch. And I'm going to set up some things. So we're going to get the character's movement. And we are going to set um, his air control to 1. 
PS4 air control whilst running on the wall. And then we are going to set his um, gravity scale to zero so he can't fall while he's wall running. Okay. And then uh, we are going from here, we're going to set plane constraint, the thing we made earlier. And we'll just plug this in and we'll set it to one on the Z axis so our player can't move up or down while he's wall running. And then we'll just grab this wall running variable which we just created earlier and we'll set this to true so that we know that our player is wall running. Okay. So next, if we um, set, when we get on a new wall, we want to set our jumps left to two. So when we jump on a wall, we still have two jumps so that we can continue wall running. Okay, after that, if we go to the wall capsule again, on component end overlap, we're going to want to stop wall running. So the other actor. So I'm just going to copy all of this as it's literally just going to be the opposite of this when we stop wall running. So we control C and control V. And I'll just plug everything back together. I'll unplug that. We do that. And I'm going to set the air control back to 0.05. That's the default value that it is. And I'll set the gravity scale back to one. Again, that's the default value that there is. And we'll set the plane constraint back to zero so that we can just move freely. And uh, we'll uncheck wall running so that we know so our player knows he is not on the wall anymore. Okay. We're then going to add a custom event. And I'm going to call this wall run. And wall run, so if we have any other reasons that we, for some reason, stop running on the wall, we can end our wall run. Okay. So after this, I'm going to make another custom event and call this wall tilt. This is so that our camera, our camera is going to start tilting depending on what direction of the wall we're in. So we're going to do a line trace by channel to detect what um, side of the wall we're on. We'll just uh, plug this into wall tilt. And the start of our line trace, we're going to get the axis location. So get axis location, and this will be the start of our line trace. And the end of it, we're just going to add a vector plus another vector. And what we want to do is um, Right click and we want to get the actors right back. Sorry, we want to get the control rotation, get the actors rotation, and then we're going to get the right vector from this and we'll multiply this by a float. And I'm just going to make this like a hundred. So it's going to do a line from our right. We'll have a line trace which will shoot from the right of the actor to make on his rotation. I'm going to set this to four duration so we can see this. And if this is true, we're going to drag the on right variable that we created. And if it hits, it means we are on the right side of a wall. So we're just going to set that so it knows for our jumping script, which we created earlier. And then we're going to create a branch. And we'll just plug this in. And so, if this is true or false, we're going to do some certain things. So, if this is true, true, and we hit something, it means that we are going to be on the right of the wall. So, I'll just print this so we know we're on the right of the wall. And if this is false, we're going to print a string. And this means we are on the left of the wall. So, our right on the left. So, we know which side of the wall the player is on. And at the end of the script, on our on we're going to overlap with our wall. I'm going to set the wall tilt so that it knows to rotate the camera. Sorry, so, so it knows what side of the wall we're on. And I'm just going to drag this wall. You want to make sure that your wall is tagged and has the tag wall on it. And then another thing you want to do is on the wall, you want to make sure that it. You scroll down. If you generate overlap events so that we can overlap with this wall actor, and I'll just duplicate it. And if we go on it, if we go, it can tell we're on the left of the wall because it doesn't hit anything. And if we go on this, it can tell we're on the right of the wall because we hit it. And that's how we know whether we're on the left or right of the wall. And we'll use this for our camera tilt that we're about to make. So if we just go back into it, and we just go back to where we were.
what we are going to do is we're going to add a timeline. So if we go to that timeline and go inside this, we make the length of this quite short, so it's going to go like 0.25, and we add a new float track. Um, and we're going to add two key curves, so at time zero, have a value of zero, and add key curve, and at time 0.25, the length of our track, have a value of 20, and this is going to be how much our character is going to rotate. So, if we just move this, what we're going to do is create a new variable called uh, Wall tilt. We're going to create a reference to this later and I'll explain what this means in a bit. And this is going to be uh, a float. So if we just compile and if we just drag this in to play, so we'll start to play this timeline when we're on the wall. So we've got a bit more to do. So next we're going to uh, reference rotating our character so that it, we get a wall tilt effect. effect. So if we set the, we need to get the rotation of the character. So we're just searching, must be getting the wrong thing. So if we get that, I think it's get the controller. Yep, and then from here we will uh, get the control rotation. And then from this, we are going to set the control rotation so we can rotate our character. So I'm just going to break this link. And then split the structure of both of these. And we'll just plug the Y into the Y and the Z into the Z. Because we'll only be rotating the X axis, as this will be the axis we'll be rotating. And what we're going to do is, on the new track, we're going to multiply this by a float and this is going to be our wall tilt angle so if this and then we're just going to plug this in so if we're on the right we're going to make this wall tilt angle negative so that our camera rotates in the correct direction so after this we are going to set our wall tilt angle and if it's right we're going to make it negative so it does it the opposite way depending on what side of the wall and this will be positive before we set this on the left. So if we just drag our set wall tilt and then just plug this in, this will be positive. Okay, so um, we're going to create another custom event and this is going to be end wall run. So when we're off the wall, we're going to reverse and make our camera go back to normal. So at the end of the on component, begin end overlap with the wall. We're gonna do the end wall run, sorry, the end wall tilt, and that will end our wall tilt. And then from here, from the we're gonna end our wall run because we won't be on a wall after we've jumped off the wall. And that's there, so we just compile and everything. Whoops, okay, so that's an error. So the connection for this, um, we need to plug this into the controller. Okay, and we compile everything should be working. So let's just test it. So again, make sure that your wall generates overlap events and has the tag wall on it. Otherwise, this won't work. All these walls have this. And if we just uh, go and run, we go. That's doing it the wrong side. That's the correct side. And we have our wall run, but there are a couple of errors. So let's just quickly fix them. So that's an error as well. So if we go here. Um, I found what I did was this needs to be one. I made it negative one, so that value needs to be one. So I accidentally didn't do that. And then the end will run events too early, so as it's not got an actor, so we just need to plug this there. And if we compile, everything should be working. So now if we click play, we run, and we jump. We should now be on our wall, and that is how to create a wall run system. Uh, I hope you enjoy then I'll see you next time. If you have any ideas, just uh, leave them below and bye.